Shalom, brothers and sisters and family. Shalom. Shalom. Welcome to another Sabbath day. This is another great day that the Most High God has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Got another wonderful topic today. This topic today is called The Nature of the Unbeliever. The Most High God has it written in this Bible how we his people, most who are unbelievers, are going to behave. Now there are many, many lessons and many scriptures that talks about the unbelievers in this Bible. Forgive me, I didn't get them all, but if I if I would have went to and gotten them all, this lesson probably would have been a continuation for about about a month or two. So I don't want to bore you all with all of the things that the Most High God, you know, forgive me, but all the things that the Most High God said in regards to the nature of the unbelievers, it's it's a great topic because the fact is. Most High God knows you before you even knew yourself. He knows what you're capable of doing and the things that you do. And He talks about it in this Bible. You just have to read it and, and, and have the fear of the Most High God to get the understanding. You know, someone has to teach you this, this, this lesson, this knowledge. You just can't read this Bible from front to, from front, from the start to finish and think you're going to understand this book this is a spiritual book that you will not get understanding if you are not spiritual in, in yourself if you are not doing his laws, statutes and commandments you will not understand probably a little of it you, you get a little understanding but that's it but anyway greetings Israel or Shalom my brothers and sisters a byword and a proverb is in every land the people of the captivity of the sub-Saharan and transatlantic slave trade. I have to make certain that you know who my audience is. Most of the time the enemy thinks that they should involve themselves and we are the most vocal in a negative way. Let me read that again. Most of the time the enemy thinks that they should involve themselves and are the most vocal in a negative way. This is referring only to my people, those mentioned before. This lesson, will, this lesson will explore the nature of the unbelievers. Our records show how they will behave, what they will say, and how they will convince others to try to persuade them of their faith. Let's, we're going to start at 1 Timothy chapter 6, start at verse 3. If a man teach otherwise, say it again. If any man teach otherwise, if any man of Israel, come on, and consent not the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, into the doctrine which is according to godliness. So we're talking about two things. If you're not teaching according to the wholesome words, which is what the Most High God has said, and and what His Son has said, which is the same thing, because His Son is also the Word of God. He is the Word, and to the and to the doctrine, which is according to godliness. If any man teaching Israel and doesn't use the words of the Most High God or the words of the Messiah Jesus the Christ, which is the Word of the Most High God, let's get John one and one to prove that. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Word was with God. So that is a there is a person with God. The Word was with God. Come and on. the Word was God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. The same. The same person in the beginning was with God. So we're talking about the Messiah. He was with God and He is God. So this doctrine, this Word of God is His doctrine. And His Son is the same doctrine. The Messiah, the Word, was with the Most High God in the beginning. You must teach from the Word of the Most High God and Christ. Timothy 6 and 4, come on. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions, the stripes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, 
evil surmises. The nature of the unbeliever. This is what the unbelievers do to the prophets all the time in the street. These are the type of people with the same spirit you encounter. I'm, I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter where you are, where the prophets are on the street. These are the same spirits every time that comes before them with, with the same this the same actions with the same actions what does it say he is proud from those who don't teach from the Bible they are proud having no knowledge of the law refusing to be corrected they don't uh, ask questions unrelated to the topic running to John 316 and Galatians 328 like they know something but would never read Galatians 329 Afterwards come strife of words like that Bible was written by a so-called white man. Railing such as you are being racist, preaching hate. They refuse the word of God and faith in the Messiah. They refuse it. They refuse the word of the Most High God and the faith in, in the Messiah. And then these be the ones talking about they love God. But they don't want to hear nothing out of this Bible. Continue on. 1 Timothy 6 and 5. We're talking about the nature of the unbelievers. This is what unbelievers do. Come on. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds. And the destitute of the truth. Supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. They are disputing with the doctrine of men. Everything they learn from their slave masters. Unwilling to know who they are before they became slaves. And learn the slave master's doctrine. Let's get Isaiah 29 and 13. Because most High God already told you. Who you were. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as his people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me. Oh, I love me Jesus Christ. I love me some Jesus. Come on. But have removed their heart far from me. Won't keep not one commandment. Come on. And their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. Oh, the laws are done away with. That's what the precepts of men, that's his doctrine. It don't say nowhere in the Bible that the laws are done away with. And, and the laws that you're referring to that, that's done away with are the laws of sacrifice because the Lamb of God, which was the sacrifice that the Most High God had, you know, received, was the Messiah. He was the perfect Lamb. The Lamb of God. Y'all say that all the time in y'all churches. But you don't understand that law of sacrifice was done away with for every time you committed a sin worthy of a, 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 a blood sacrifice other than your life. These people have removed their minds from the laws and their understanding toward the Most High God is taught by the doctrine of men. We are instructed to withdraw ourselves from these people. This includes your family also. This is the separation that the Messiah spoke of. This is how we are behaving today. Let's get that separation the Messiah was talking about. Matthew 10, 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I am not come to send peace, but a sword. Okay. When you receive the knowledge of the truth, there will be no peace in your family for separation. Because when you start understanding the law, the law separates you from, from wickedness. It separates you from the other nations. It separates you from acting like the other nations. When you start becoming in, in, in the knowledge of the truth, that's going to be a sword between you and even your family. Come on. Matthew 10, 35. For I'm telling us that a man at variance against his father. At variance. Come on. And the daughter against her mother. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Messiah is letting you know that a separation will occur between the righteous and the unrighteous within your own family. Sons will be separated from fathers. Daughters from mothers. Daughter-in-laws from mother-in-laws. It's going to be a separation. Matthew 10.36 and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. What's a foe? Enemy. Uh, your enemy going to be the people in your own house. This, this is what the Most High God said. This is the nature of the unbeliever. Your enemy shall be those of your own family. As you can see, the apostles were teaching from what the Messiah said. These are some of the people who will have perverse disputings that they learn from their oppressors. These are the people that are going to have this, these perverse disputes. The people in your own family. Matthew 10, 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. If you love your family more than you love the truth, the word of the Most High God and Christ, then you are not worthy of the Messiah's sacrifice. 
You're not worthy of his sacrifice. Let's continue. First Timothy 6 and 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Okay. See, this here, you know, the so-called Christians probably would read this. If godliness and goodness is godliness and with contentment is great gain without understanding what godliness is. What is godliness? Let's get to understanding what godliness is. First Timothy one and one. First Titus. Oh, that's Titus. Titus one and one. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. The, the acknowledging, the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. Godliness is acknowledging and keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Which is the truth. Truth is the, is the law. The law is the truth. According to Psalms 119 and 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is the truth. So godliness is after the truth. After the law. So when you are being godliness. You are doing everything this Bible commands you to do. Hmm. I wonder why they don't say that. They, they, they give godliness a different, a, a different definition that is outside of this Bible. The Bible tells you everything it wants you to know and what you it wants you to do. What Israel must do. This is not a every man's book. It's only for the twelve tribe of the nation of Israel. This book is not for everybody. Let's continue. First Timothy six and seven. For he brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. In essence, don't worry about the things of this world, only serve the most high God. Let's get Matthew 6. This, this is not saying you can't have nothing in this world. But if you are working and spending all your time concerned about the world and not concerned about your he heavenly place, you can only have one place. If you're going to spend all your time worrying about the things of this world, what, what, what time are you going to spend on having, having uh, the, getting the kingdom? You know, because the fact is, yeah, you're going to have to worry about some things in this world because you need, need things, but the Most High God is not making the, the point that, that you can't have anything. He's not saying that. He's saying that don't worry, don't put all your emphasis in one basket worrying about the world. Oh, I got to get this, this, this Cadillac and this Escalade and, and I got to get these Jordans and I get all, get all this and get all that. He's telling you don't worry about that stuff. So, Let's, let's get uh, Matthew 6 and 24 because we're going to get to that point. Alright? No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is basically the devil. All the things of this world. You can't serve the Most High God keeping His law, statutes, and commandments and worrying about everything in this world. You can't love the Most High God and spend all of your time distracted by the things of this world. First Timothy 6 and 8. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. The Most High will feed and clothe you. Be content with the, this until His kingdom comes upon the earth. Continue. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Wanting to be rich. Satan has prepared traps for you. Like I, I, I talk with some of some of my uh, Israelite brothers from time to time, and the fact is, you know, you can't dance with Satan until you know all the dance that Satan do. You know, when you dance with the devil, you better make sure you know all the steps, because, like I'm saying, he can go basic to advance in a hurry, especially on his plane. When you plan in his field, you're not safe. But when you start making deals with the devil, you going like then for, for this richness and for this money. This is what the, uh, First Timothy six and nine is talking about. Wanting to be rich, Satan has prepared traps for you, like homosexuality, pedophilia, and bestiality, which will destroy the Israelite man and woman. I don't think this is this is a joke, but this is no joke. All of those that are uh, uh, Getting it, getting this money, like like they say, we can get this money and sign up with all these different record labels and stuff. Oh, Satan got a plan for it. You got to do some things. First Timothy six and ten. 
A cave. But thou! No, First Timothy 6 to 10. Oh, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Okay. We're not talking about people just having money. We're talking about people that lose money, do anything for money, kill you for money, got to get this money, sell drugs for money, break all kinds of laws for money. Most High God is not talking about that because you know what? Abraham was rich. King David was wealthy. King Solomon was wealthy. But when you, when you do everything unlawful to gain money, that's the root of all evil. Because you covered it after money. You desire money so much that you'll do anything for it. Even sell your soul. When you see that you would do anything to get paid, that is the love of money with, that Satan would prepare your soul unto him. He would trap you in these hurtful lusts. After you have received his money and trappings, you will become regretful and sorrowful, realizing your error. Because I'm going to tell you, you know, at the end of Michael Jackson's life and at the end of Prince's life, they start recognizing that. They got entrapped in, in, in Satan's world. Throwing up all of his, you know, his goat heads and all of these 666 and all of that. You know, Prince was in concert doing with, with, with all of these different symbols on, on himself in his, at the early age. But he recognized that at the end, you better know all the dances before you get in and you, you get in a step with Satan. And all of them died just mysteriously after they, they were uh, given their uh, rights back. Michael Jackson had his, but he was leaving Sony with half of their, uh, ha you know, owning half of their, uh, their, uh, their catalogs. Prince was giving, was, was going to get his back about a couple of weeks before he died. Mysteriously. And nobody brought it to their attention. Prince was a vegan, vegan. They don't put under natural stuff in, their, in his body. And they talk about he died of an overdose on drugs. That don't even sound right to anybody that know what, who, uh, what vegans are and what they do. They don't put anything unnatural in their body like that. They go holistic. Come on, First Timothy 6 and 11. But thou, O man of God, Fly these things, flee. flee these things, and fall after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Flee from this, follow the commandments, and return to the law, having faith in the Messiah, being patient. What is patience? Let's get Revelations 14 and 12. Here is the patience of the saints. And we're going to tell you what the patience are. Let's let's what it is. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and Patience. the faith of Jesus. Patience are they that keep the commandments of the Most High God and the faith in the Messiah. See, this book tells you exactly what it means. You don't have to guess what these this stuff means and get get uh, worldly worldly definitions of these words. Patience. The, the, the Bible tells you what patience is, what righteousness is, and what faith is. Patience of the saints of the of the are the Israelites keeping the commandments and faith in Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Let's examine what the disciples said and compare it to what the prophets said regarding your preachers, pastors, or bishops. Let's get first Peter's sure, let's start first Peter's five and one. The elders which are among you I exhort who are, am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed okay so what is Peter saying here read that again the elders which are among you I exhort who am also an elder okay now let's let's get to that point the elders that are among you I exhort when you exhort somebody what are you doing no you you respecting them they're, they're leaders you exhort those. Because he said, if you're going to hate an elder, he said, which I, I also am an elder. So, elders among you, I'm exhorting you, I'm, I'm, I'm respecting you as elders, because I'm also an elder. 
Now what did he say? And the witness of the sufferings of Christ. So he said, I was there. I was there when the Messiah suffered and died. And come on, and also partake of the glory that shall be revealed. This is for the preachers, pastors, bishops, and all that claim to witness the sufferings of Jesus the Christ. This is referring to all of you who are elders or leaders of the church, which are the people, which are the leaders of the church, which are the Israelites. Come on, 1 Peter 5 and 2. Feed the flock of God. Feed who? The flock of God. No, I thought he was supposed to be feeding the pastors. Y'all supposed to feed us. What did it say? Feed the flock of God. Who is that? Uh, the Israelites. Feed the flock. Feed the Israelites. Come on. Which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint. Don't be forced to do this. But willingly, not for filthy lucre. lucre. Okay, lucre. what is lucre? Money. Money. Okay, what do you say? Do that. Say it again. Not for what? Not for filthy lucre. Wait a minute. Hmm. Would, 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 would Bishop T.D. Jakes come to your church if you didn't pay him? No. What about Creflo Dollar? No. None of you pastors would come to your church if you didn't pay them. You didn't put them up in a fancy hotel, and you didn't you didn't submit a, a, you didn't bow down to every request that they made. I will I will fruit salads and I will pre water at all of the church, all all of my events in my hotel. I will fresh fruits and fruit baskets and all of this stuff. You know I won't peel grapes and you know they they have a lot of different stupid requests that when they come to your church, you got to adhere to in order to get them there. I want ten percent of all the money collected, or uh, uh, however much. I want I want this amount of money plus I want a, a, a percent of all the money you collect in the church for that day, because they say we're gonna pack the audience and we want some of that money. We want our fee plus we want a percent of all your money collection, everything collected. They not coming, so. Now, this is Peter, who was a witness to the Messiah dying, exhorting the elders and telling them that he was an elder and he was partaker in the in the in the uh, kingdom that would be soon revealed. He telling the elders to do what? Feed the flock, feed the people, feed the Israelites. Don't be don't be don't be doing it by don't be in this position by constraint by being forced to do so neither but but you got to be willing to do it and not for filthy lucre not for money but of a what Jordan but of a ready mind you got to be have, you got to be ready to serve when I say a ready mind what that mean um. Dominic, when it's saying having a ready mind to, uh, to serve, what that mean? A ready mind to um, when when you when you have a ready mind, a uh, ready mind to follow commandments. And hey, you you got to do that, but but you have a ready mind. It's saying more than that. If you're going to be a leader, what what you got to have? You gotta have patience, but what you gotta have? Leadership skills. You gotta have leadership skills, but what? But in those leadership skills, what else is involved? Because to be a preacher, what you gotta know? The Bible. You gotta know the law. You gotta know the Bible. You gotta have a ready mind to serve, but you gotta be taught. You gotta be learned. You gotta be a leader through and through. Don't take on leadership unless you know this Bible. And can lead your people. Hmm. Again, Apostle Peter, a uh, 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 disciple, Peter the disciple was saying, Feed the sheep of the Most High God. 
This is a particular group of people. Don't take on this position to gain money and wealth, but with a mind ready to serve, knowing the law. Let's continue up First Peter 6 and 5 and 3. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being ensembles to the flock. This is present day Christianity. The shepherds are lords over the Most High God's heritage, demanding tithes, which is not a present law of the new covenant. They are not leading by example. They are teaching the doctrine of men. Let's get Ezekiel thirty-four and two. This is what the prophet. This is what the prophet said in that regard. Jordan, continue. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of we, Israel. We talking about the same pastors and preachers that uh, that uh, that Peter was talking about. Come on. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, and to the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? Should not the shepherds feed the flock? Woe, what does woe mean? Um, George, doesn't it say it? Destruction? Woe means destruction. Woe to you. Destruction to you, you that you shepherds who feed yourselves. Don't you supposed to feed the flock? Yes. But Peter knew this. He wasn't saying nothing different than what the Messiah said, nothing different than what the Most, uh, the Most High God said to the, the prophets to say to his people. Destruction to y'all for feeding yourselves and not and not the flock. You getting all fat and rich and stuff, and, 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 your, and your flock is walking and, and catching the bus. But you demanding ten percent of of their of almost zero income. I want ten percent of your money. Oh uh, no, I don't want ten percent after the government take it out. I want ten percent of gross. What you mean? Not I want ten percent before FICA, before before uh, the taxes. I want ten percent. So if you make four hundred dollars a week gross. That means before the taxes came out and before FICA came out and for all this other stuff that the government take out, they want 10% of the $400. And you barely got money to pay your bills. Woe to you. That's why you'll never see me in one of these churches. Because you know what? I know that the tithes, according to Deuteronomy 14, 22 to 29, Tithes are done away with. Tithes was the, the Levitical portion. And you pastors are, 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 are being very deceptive talking about tithes and, 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 and stuff like that. And it wasn't about money. It was about, about crops of your seed that, that, the, uh, that bring forth uh, fruit year by year. Bring forth crops. And it was ten percent of your herd and, and, and your cattle and your, and your sheep and all that, and you, that ten percent was given to the Levitical priesthood, the Le Levites, because they, they were in service to the Most High God. They didn't have time to be out there in the field growing, and Most High God didn't give them land. So all the other tribes were responsible for taking care of the Levitical priesthood, Levitical priest. I tell you, it, it, they're robbing you blind, and like I'm saying. They're going outside of the law teaching you what the devil is doing. Because this is not, what they're doing is not in the Bible. You don't supposed to be paying tithes this time, or this at all. When the Messiah died, he, you know, the fact is, if you read the Bible, and, 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 and y'all talking about, we only follow Christ. If you read the Bible and see what Christ did, the Messiah never went in the temple and made his sacrifice. Neither did his d disciples, neither did John the Baptist. They don't have any records saying that not all of those that followed the Messiah made a sacrifice. That is why the leadership was wanting them dead. Feed the flock. All right, come on, continue on. Ezekiel 34 and 2. We'll start Amen. over. So, man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Well be to the shepherds of Israel that do that do feed themselves. Unto unto who? Unto unto what what nation? Shepherds of what? Of Israel that ain't, do feed themselves. Ain't talking about no other nation. See the shepherds of Israel. 
This is this is not according concerning any other nation. So whatever the white man does is cool. Whatever he does, whatever the Arab man, whatever African man do, it's you know most like God didn't give them laws. He only ticked with the, the shepherds of Israel. Those are, th that's it. They can do that. You can't follow after them. This Bible is only only made for you Israelites. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. All of you of the diaspora. Spread out throughout Africa, throughout Germany, Europe, throughout Asia, Russia, everywhere. That you were, that, that the transatlantic and the sub-Saharan slave trade sent you. You the Israelites. Woe be to the people that leads you. The Most High God told his prophet Ezekiel to prophesy against the pastors, preachers, and bishops who feed themselves but not the flock. If you examine your shepherds, they are trying to get jets to live a jet set life. What are they trying to do? Because every time you turn the TV on, somebody's asking for a $65 million jet. In the name of Jesus. But not the Christ of the Bible. I don't know what Jesus is there referring to. When the Messiah instructed his disciples, the first followers of, of the Messiah, this is what he told them regarding money. Let's start in Matthew 10 and 5. Alex. Okay. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. Don't go. To the Hellenized Jews living as Gentiles. Neither go to the northern kingdom, the Samaritans. That the Most High God had divorced as his people. Don't go to those two those two people. Don't go to them yet. So when he sent his disciples out, he sent them to the lost sheep. That's, he going to say that, come on. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Those who were not Hellenized but have lost their way. Because we had lost our way by then. Come on. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Preach repentance to get to the kingdom of, of heaven. To get the kingdom. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely ye have received. Freely give. Freely. Heal the sick. Freely. Cleanse the lepers. Freely. Raise the dead. Freely cast out devils. Don't ask for tithes or any kind of money. Come on. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses. As a matter of fact, don't have money on you. Come on. Nor scrip for your journey. Neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet that staves. For the workman is worthy of his meat. Don't have paper to write or an agreement of debt. Neither two coats. Extra shoes or uh, staff. The work that you do for your people is worthy of your food and lodging. So he was like, don't worry about all that. Because the power I give you to raise the dead, to heal the sick, to heal the lepers, that's, that's enough for you to get paid. If, in, any way you go, say, look, I don't have anywhere to stay. Can you put me up? You don't heal their child from a deadly disease and they hanging on for dear life. You don't heal them. People be like, man, man, come on, stay here. I, I know so-and-so went down the street down there. I'm going to go get him and get his daughter healed too. Well, we'll feed you. They'll, they'll feed you until, you know, everybody healed. And they'll still be ready to feed you. Man, you can stay here as long as you want. All the, all the people in the community be bring you food. Hey, they still here? Uh, yeah, we bought some lunch for you. We bought something for you to eat. They, they'll be cooking food all the time. Every time you turn around, you're like, man, whew, I'm full already, but they bring me more food. You just don't understand how, how our communities was once upon a time. A, a, a good man come in like that, that that has ability to, to heal, cast out devils, to raise the dead, and to do things like that. You ain't got to worry about nobody, you know, not having nowhere to stay. You just tell, you just, when you, when you, when you finish healing them and stuff, like, look, I ain't got nowhere to stay today. You know, really ain't got no money, so. People be like, man, you don't need no money. Come on in here. I got an extra room over there. You know, I, matter of fact, we go draw you some water, take a bath, and. Hey, man, don't worry about it. We'll feed you. All 
All right. Okay. Matthew ten eleven. And enter whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till ye go thence. The Messiah only also told his disciples to ask in every town they entered who was able to board them without being a burden. Now, when the Messiah had ascended to the Father, the disciples were still telling the shepherds to feed the flock. When did it change to what the pastors, preachers, and bishops are doing today? When did that change? The Most High has the same problem with the shepherds who are feeding themselves and not the flock. Let's get this continue with Ezekiel 34 and 3. Ye eat the fat, and ye clothed you, and ye clothed you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. Okay. $65 million jet. That's eating the fat. Fifteen hundred, three thousand dollars suits every Sunday. Fat. How do they kill those that are fed like them? The Bible would definitely tell you. Let's get Proverbs twenty-one sixteen. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. That's why you kill. That's how you kill them. You, you, you. They wandering out of the way of understanding, chasing that dollar, because you can't serve the most. High. The Messiah already told you. You cannot, you cannot serve two masters. You either love one and hate the other. The paid members of the church who are gaining the members of the congregation are among the dead in darkness. Homosexuality, adultery, and whoremongering run rampant among the leaders of the church. Continue on. Ezekiel 34, 4. That's, that's, in, uh, uh, you, that's how you wander out of the way of understanding when you're involved in all of these things because homosexuality, adultery, and all that stuff is rampant in these churches. Rampant. You know, you got these women that be sitting on the front of the, front of, the, uh, uh, of the church every day with these short, short dresses on and the preacher looking down, you know, they, they, that's, by, that's by nature. They do that on purpose because the fact is, he probably sleeping one or all of them. It's 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 a it's a show. Everybody coming in, you know, trying to outdress the other one with these big old hats and stuff on. Man, I'm gonna tell you, it's a it's a it's not where the Most High God is is, is visiting. All right, continue Ezekiel 34 and 4. The disease which he but the disease have ye not strained, neither have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye brought bound up that which was broken, neither have ye brought again that which was driven away, neither have ye sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. Mm. This is what our pastors are doing today. You know, I've seen some churches Send this letter. Uh, they had it on the news. It happened somewhere down in Houston, Texas, where this church sent this lady a letter telling her that she owed like eighteen hundred dollars in tithe money because she hadn't paid tithes in a while, and she is no longer a member of their church. And she they kicked her out of the church because she hadn't paid tithes. I'm gonna tell you. These pastors act like they own you and they owe, you owe them money for, for a law that doesn't exist in the Bible anymore. But they say the laws are done away with, but not tithing. And that law is done away with. It is actually done away with because that's part of the law of sacrifice. That belonged to the Levites. The, the tithe money, the tithe was not money, it was, it was crops and it was flock and it was sh your, your animals. And your oils and your wines, you you gave ten percent of that to the Levites to keep keep them afloat. They didn't have crops and stuff. See, in Matthew ten and eight, the Messiah instructed his disciples, shepherds, to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, and raise the dead. In today's world, if you get sick, it's none of your pastor's concern. Even there, even if they are asked to pray for you, it won't work because the Most High doesn't listen to sinners. Let's get that proved. Proverbs twenty-eight and nine. 
Proverbs 28 and 9. Dominic, read that. Proverbs 28 and 9. He that heareth that turn away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayers shall be abomination. The Most High God doesn't listen to those who who teaches against the law. Dominic, continue reading that John 9 31. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. God don't listen to sinners. Come on. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his and doth his will, him he heareth. The Most High God only listens to those that are keeping his commandments. Most like God don't hear you sinning. So if, even if you ask the pastor to pray for you, he coming up with that bald head and that bald face. Most like God ain't listening to him because he's already in sin, it just in appearance. He not listen to none of the laws, but the laws are done away with. You know, your fear toward me has been taught by the precept of man. That's what that white man taught you. He's teaching you a doctrine that doesn't belong to him. It belongs to you. How can he teach you something that belongs to you? The white man can't teach you nothing that belongs to you. That is your heritage. Y'all going to his school to learn about you. He ain't going to teach you about you because he has not taught you anything about you before you were a slave. I'm going to keep saying this every lesson. This white man who knows who you were before you were a slave has not written in any of his books that you go to school 1 through 12 in college and so on and so forth has not taught you anything about you before you were a slave. Why is that? Keep trusting in this devil. He ain't, tell, he ain't telling you nothing about yourself. And you're going to go to him to teach you about your book that he don't follow? Let's continue, Ezekiel 34 and 5. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. The children of Israel became scattered, and all these nations without a, without a right, righteous guide to guide them with the law. Or a righteous shepherd to guide them with the law. So... When you, when you uh, don't have a leader to guide you inside the law, because you know what? Martin Luther King was, you know, trying to, trying to lead us, but he, he wasn't a righteous shepherd. You know, they called him Reverend, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King or whatever, but he was not a righteous shepherd because he wasn't keeping the laws. You know, he was, he was talking Gandhiism. Muhammad Gandhi and all his other stuff. Quoting Gandhi. He wasn't quoting the law. Because his I have a dream speech is it's in the Bible. You know. He was he was not quoting the law. All our shepherds. None of them the, the past shepherds, all of them got killed. None of them was what was not according to the Most High God's ways. The children of Israel became scattered in all these nations without a righteous shepherd to guide them with the law. And they became food to all the nations who taught them about their gods. Because this is this is what the beast this is what this is what the beast mean right there. They became a meat to all the beasts of the field. Let's get the explanation of what a beast is. Ecclesiastes 3 and 18. I said in my heart concerning the estate of the sons of man, that God might manifest them, and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. They are beasts. Every man is considered beast to the Most High God. Let's continue. Ezekiel 34 and 6. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth. And none of the searchers seek after them. The children of Israel have wandered through all types of politics and religions like Islam and so-called Christianity, Democratic, Republican, and Independent. We're scattered everywhere with all types of ideologies thought up by their oppressors. Romans 1 and 25. 
Let's 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 move on to something else. Romans one and twenty five. Who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Who changed the laws, the truth, which is the law? Who trained the laws of the Most High God, saying the laws are done away into a lie? And worship and serve that so called white Jesus. That's a creature or beast. More than the Most High God, which is the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Continue. For this cause, God gave them up into vile affection. This is why the Most High God gave you up to this, this vile affection that you guys have now. Come on. For even their women did change the natural use unto that which is against nature. The nature of the unbeliever. This is what the Most High God did. Because you are worshiping that so-called white Jesus, the Most High God has given you up to a foul, a nasty affection. That's what foul means. It's a foul, a nasty affection. The woman changing the natural use, which is against nature. A woman's nature use is to a woman's natural use is to get married and have children. Not a woman being with another woman. The Most High God condemns this behavior. Let's get Romans one twenty seven. Let's continue. And likewise, also the men. He didn't leave you out either. Also, you men, uh, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust one towards another. Burn in your lust one towards another. Men with men. Wow, he had to say it. He had to say it a different way so that you understood the first way what he was talking about. Burn in their lust one towards another. Men with men. Come on. Working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was me. Okay. Working in working in themselves which is unseemly. Mm. The most high condemns men being with men, leaving that woman lusting after each other. Men who do this received in themselves in their body, he said received in themselves. So he said within, receive within, within yourself, in your body, a payback from the Most High, a disease that is right, judgment from the Most High. Here's the judgment, Leviticus 20 and 13. If a man also lie with mankind, as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. The Most High God put you to death, because you received it within yourselves, Receiving in themselves that recompense, that payback of their error, which was meat. Meat means which was right. This is why the Most High says that they receive in themselves that which is meat, which is right. Come on. And Ro e uh, Romans 1 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. A reprobate. What's that? Okay. To do those things which are not convenient. This is Israel in a whole today. This is what Israel is today. They have no knowledge of, of the Most High God today. The Most High God gave them over to a degenerate mind. Doing things like eating the wrong food, stealing, killing, lying, whoremongering, adultery, etc. This is what a reprobate mind is. You're degenerate. You don't even know the law. How, how you're supposed to act. You don't even know your heritage. And you don't want to know your heritage. You just want to be the same old thing that that white man called you when he slapped you on your back with that whip the first time. Toby? You you still want to be Toby. Where is the strong Kunta? Where, where he going to stand the hell up? You scared to turn back into Kunta? You Toby. You got a, you got that extra whip when when that, when, that, when, he, when he told that black man to hit hit Toby hit Kunta again, hit him again. <laughs> Toby. You've been Toby ever since. Romans one twenty nine. Be filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers. Okay, this is going on in our community right today. In any Israelite community, these are the things that the Most High God gave us over to a reprobate mind, and it includes all of these things. 
Come on, and there's still more. Backbiters, haters of God, the spiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Okay, all of this. Boasters. And I'm going to tell you, now, this one is big, even though people overlook this one. Boasters, in all your communities, in all the rap songs, what are they doing? In all the rap songs, in, all, in, in, in your community, what are they doing? Bragging. What is bragging? Boasting. It's boasting. That's, that's everything, you know, you, you listen to any of these Negroes on these rap songs, and some of them old as dirt. Still talking about cars, women, and clothes, and all this other stuff. What you they got and what somebody else don't have. Nigga! I said it. It's in the Bible. And, 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 and matter of fact, it, it's an insult to call these fools niggas because niggas would just mean black. What the what the Romans call the disciples. It's, it's, it's a matter of fact to call you a nigger is is a is is, is it, it, I'm telling you because that's what the Romans call the disciples and the apostles. It just meant black. I can't even call you that. Grown ass boys still don't know what it means to be a man. Old as wax, but you still don't understand what a man is. Boasting about what somebody else got. And your community look like hell. Got children all over the community. What you doing for? Them? Okay, let's continue on. Romans one thirty one. What understanding? You don't have that either. Come on, covenant breakers. You break all kinds of like I said. What's your brother? Oh man, I I'll be over there tomorrow. Help you move. You ain't coming. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He ain't coming. All right, come on. Without natural affection. Don't have no natural affection. Natural affection means that you go be what? What natural affection is? You're attracted to a woman. You. Oh, men are attracted to women. And women are attracted to what? Men. So, it's going, basically saying from what it said in the beginning. Even the women changing their natural use. And the men also changing their natural use. So you don't have no natural affection. You want to be sleeping with a man. With men. And I'm going to tell you, it's, it's, it's prevalent in the, in the entertainment industry. All these men, you think that a buff and all this stuff and, 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 and strong men, they getting cracked all the time. No natural affection. Come on. Implacable. Unmerciful. These people don't understand the law. They are willing to break the commandments. Those who claim that they love you only if they have something to gain. They imply theories without proof making it their science and they are also unmerciful this goes against everything that the Messiah teaches let's get Romans 132 who know the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them okay what does that mean Alex uh, it's saying that these people they know the judgment of God that they they commit this, these things even though they know that, uh, that God's punishments and not, not only do they do the, these things but they enjoy people who do them mm, you got some of it right but you missed the last piece well they like not enjoy but they he's they talking about worship people who no, do them no you talk, we're talking about those that do them know it's worthy of death but those who say, oh, it ain't nothing wrong with being homosexual. Or, I ain't got nothing against homosexual people. Those people also are word of death as well. That's what this is saying. When it's saying, when, when it says, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. It's talking about those are the ones that's talking about those that have pleasure and those that do that, you know, being gay and all that stuff and, 
and doing the things that, that uh, the backbiters or haters of God, they have pleasure in these people, follow these people, hang out with these people. They deserve death too. Why you think when people, you know, here's a prime example. Why you think, like, sometimes when, when, uh, Ray Ray go out to hang out with, with Pookie, you knowing Pookie is a, a known drug dealer and got enemies being out there playing dominoes and drinking with, 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 with uh, with Pookie, and a drive-by occurs, Ray Ray get killed. That's punishment that is meat for Ray Ray for hanging out with him because he loving what Ray Ray do. He loving that environment. Loving what Pookie do. He loving that environment. So, Ray Ray gets killed because most I got passed judgment on him. You don't love that stuff. You, you know these people doing evil stuff, you stay away from them. You know, all right, because we we know what what the, see, the Most High God is telling you. Let's get the judgment of the Most High God of those who commit these acts is death, not only for those who do them, but for those who support people doing these acts. Let's get Romans six twenty three to verify that. For the wages of sin is death. That's what that's what the wage is for sin. Come on. But the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus our through, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Many of you who are worshiping that so called white Jesus fall under this sin against the most high God. Hmm. Um Alright, come to the first Tim now second Timothy three and one. This is this also this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. This these are the dangerous times spoken of. Come on. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters. Oh, we doing that I, I, I bring bring it up again. He, Peter says it, Paul says it no, this is Paul saying this again. Come on. Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Unthankful, unholy. Men and women are concerned about only about themselves and not other people. They become successful and forget their people. They covet the things in the world and pierce themselves through with harmful lust. They boast of their cars, clothes, jewelry, house, all the things they have attained through their covetousness. Continue. Psalms ten and three. For the wicked boasted of his heart's desire and blessed the covetous. Whom the Lord abhorreth. The most I God hate boasters. The most I God hate those these type of Israelites. He hates you when you up there boasting and all this stuff. You know you don't get no love from God, and you can say, "Oh, uh, thank Jesus, and uh, I got to give all praise to God." And you know, God is like, "Hey, listen to that fool." And you, 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 uh, you, you getting credit for a song that you just done them but boasting and talking about all kinds of sin? Most I God ain't even talk, listening to you. He probably somewhere in the corner throwing up. You talk, you, you throwing, throwing prayers up to him, thanks up to him. He probably in the corner just throwing up. It's like, I wish he shut up. I wish he closed his darn mouth because I'm getting, I'm sick already. You know, I got a, my stomach turning. You know. Okay. Second Timothy 3 and 3. Without natural affection. But there we go again. Truth breakers. False, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Without natural affection implied that these pe type of people don't love the way that the Most High God intended. Man with man, women with women. These are covenant breakers, truth breakers, and they hate a righteous man or a woman. You know, that holy roller, this holy roller, that, you this and you that. Oh, they hate the do-gooders. Come on, first Tim second Timothy three and four. Traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. They are traitors to their own people, high minded. You can't tell them in, you can't tell them nothing regarding the laws of the most high God. When when they are this way, many of our people don't want to hear about the most high God. You know, most of the time when you talk to, to people that got money and successful, they don't want to hear all that mess. They have their rewards of this world and they are not giving it up so they they're not trying to hear you but only a few will hear 
the words of the Most High God, especially when they got a, a wagon load of money. They ain't got time for that. Man, nobody got time for that. Man, you need to get out of my face with that. You're going to hear that a lot from, from these people that got, got the, uh, the riches of this world. Only the right, only the right one when the Most High God worked with their spirit was, was sit and listen. All right, continue. Second Timothy three and five. Having a form of godliness, but not but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. As the prophet Isaiah said, their fear towards the Most High God is taught by the precepts of men. This is their form of godliness. They deny the Most High God, but follow after Mammon. Turn away from these people. This is instructed by the Most High. Just turn away from them. All right, continue. Second Timothy three and six. For this sort are they which creep in the houses and lead captured silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. These are the type of men that visit houses inhabited by silly women, who are captivated by cars, money, jewelry, and fine clothes. These women are full of sin, willing to do whatever it takes to partake in sin. They are into all sorts of lusts. These women are into all sorts of lusts. You know, if you got the right amount of money, they'll they'll twerk you, but they butt in front of you all day. You know, silly women. You know, you you throw some change at them. You know, smoke a little weed with them. Silly women. And and men know what to do to go over their house, what to bring when they go. You know, that's what they, that's what men know. That's what these these Negroes know. Oh man, just need some weed, go get some something to drink. You know, maybe a little something to eat. And yeah, I'd be over there all night. Second Timothy three and seven, Jordan. Ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. These men are ever learning. They are learning about Egyptology, Islam, Christianity, chakras, etc. They never come to the knowledge of the laws, of the truth, or understanding who they are according to the Most High God. Uh, who they were before they were a slave. Because, you know, you got these, got these so-called Egyptologist people, and, and the Hamites ain't, ain't, ain't acknowledging y'all. They should know they're looking at y'all laughing. These people are so sick, they don't know who they are. You weren't Egyptians. You were a slave under the Egyptians, and you weren't around with all the that stuff on Egyptology and stuff. Man, I'm gonna tell you. You know, I, I, I'm gonna tell you. It's like watching a dog trying to be a cat. You know, you, you just laugh at it. It's, it's it's something to be. You know, our people are amazing to me because they are they are like chameleons. They are they they are into everybody's everybody else's. You know, knowledge don't want don't want to have their own knowledge. Don't want to be themselves, but they want to change and and be everybody else. They hear new new uh. They they hear new religion. They all off in it, like they they created it. You know, people sounding smart and, and looking stupid. Now let's get to our men. Let's get to Ecclesiasticus. That's Sirach in the, in the Apocrypha. 23 and 15. Jordan. Okay. The man that is accustomed to opprobrious. opprobrious words will never be reformed all the days of his life. I had to look up that word because opprobrious is not the everyday Negro word that you, 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 know, you use in conversation. Man, you're using opprobrious words. I had to look that word up, you know, because I was like, you know, I'm the regular Negro, and I'm like, hell, I ain't never heard of appropriate, and, and then again, I don't want to use a word that, that that my other brothers and sisters would know what the, what the hell I'm talking about. But, and they just be sitting there like, mm -hmm, I, I understand what you're saying, yeah, appropriate, yeah, I understand. What the, and it could be something bad. A man has used the insulting offensive, which is appropriate. Offensive words would never change all his days. So if you are used to offensive words and cussing people out and 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 
insulting people all the time, you never change all your days. All right, come on, Ecclesiastes 23 and 16. Two sorts of men multiply sin. Okay, so the Most High God is going to tell you about these these people. Two sorts of men multiply sin, and the third, come on. And the and the third will bring wrath. A hot mind. Is that's a, one. That's one sort of man. Come on, hot mind. Hot mind is a burning fire. It will never be quenched till it is till it be consumed. A fornicator in the body of his flesh never sees till he hath kindled the fire. So those are two sorts of men. Now the third, two types of men that will multiply sin: a hot-headed man and a fornicator. These are the two types. A hot-headed man is always in the middle of conflict. Wherever he is, there is some trouble. A fornicator, which is an adulterer, a homosexual, whoremonger, bestiality, pe pedophilia, sleeping with closest of kin, etc., would multiply sin upon himself because he or she would never stop. Now let's get the let's get the third that is a let's let's get the third one that the most the, the most high God said he would bring the wrath. Come on. Our bread is sweet. Ecclesiasticus 23 and 17. Our bread is sweet to a whoremonger. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. Come on. He will not leave off till he die. Okay. What what does that mean in Jordan? All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. Um. <laughs> All right. Jordan. Stab at it. Um. He just don't like any just one type of bread. He like all types of bread. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. Uh. Name some types of bread. Just just name some types of bread. Okay, white white bread, sourdough bread, sourdough, banana bread, banana bread. Come on, whole wheat bread, wheat bread. Um, now you took put that in that thing of a whole monger in regards to women. So that bread is is is, is basically saying what, Jordan? That bread is basically saying what? Different nations of women. All women are, are, are sweet to a whoremonger. Whoremonger don't care who 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 he sleep with. All women. If you're winning, he's ready. And and what it says, he will not leave off till he die. So you know, the Most High is telling you, ladies, that you can't change the ways of a whoremonger. So you get with a man that you know he's a known whoremonger. Oh, but I'll change it. Like your stuff is that good. He, he, all bread is sweet to him. Your stuff sweet. The other person's stuff sweet. All the other women's stuff sweet too. You ain't gonna change him. He ain't gonna stop this action, this behavior until he die. Or he repents. Become a new man. And it's true. You're not gonna change him. Oh, I think I can change. You ain't changing nothing. He'll 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 be he'll be probably right with you for about a time until he get used to you and break you in. After that, he done. All bread is sweet to him. He going weaken at somebody else and somebody else and somebody else. The Bible tells you this. This is the nature of the unbeliever, because unbelievers do this. Those that are righteous with the Most High God ain't going to do this. When you repent, you repent off from these ways. The Most High God is telling you, ladies, that you can't change the ways of a whoremonger. It doesn't matter how good of a woman that you think you are. They won't stop until they are dead or they repent and start keeping the Most High God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Let's continue on. Ecclesiastes 20, 23 and 18, Jordan. Um... A man that breaketh wedlock, saying thus in his heart, Who seeth me? I am compassed about with darkness. The walls cover me, and no body seeth me. What need I to fear? The Most High will not remember my sin. Mm. 
A man that breaking wedlock. You know, one of these married men going out breaking wedlock. Saying in his heart, oh, I'm in a motel. Nobody can see between these walls. Nobody going to see me. I'm way out there in the middle of nowhere. I don't, nobody I know comes out here. And most I got ain't gonna remember this sin. You know, you breaking wedlock. A married man who secretly steps out on his wife in the cover of night. He is laying up in some hotel or motel in the middle of the night and thinks nobody sees him. Why be afraid? He doesn't think that the Most High God will not remember his sins. Continue on. Ecclesiastes 23 and 19. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men and knoweth not that the eyes of the eyes of the Lord are ten thousand times brighter than the sun. How bright? Ten thousand times brighter than the sun. Mm. Beholding all of the ways of men and considering the most secret parts. He only fears being caught by men or his wife's best friend. Calling his wife, reporting to her that she is she saw him driving around town with another woman. He doesn't realize that the eyes of the Most High God is ten times brighter than the sun, seeing all the ways of man. So you you were he worried about men seeing him uh uh his oh his so called wife's nosy best friend don't call and ratting him out. Oh yeah, I saw him running around in, in the car, some husband in the car with him all day. Here I seen him all over town. Why you that work? Okay, Ecclesiastes 23 and 20. Come on, Jordan. He knew all things are ever they were created. So also after they were perfitted, he looked upon them all. Okay. Continue, Ecclesiastes 23 and 21. This man shall be punished in the streets of the city. And where he suspecteth not, he shall be taken. The whoremonger shall be punished in the streets. A drive-by. A drive-by shooting. Beaten by the police. Random shooting. Getting hit by a car. Mauled by dogs. Struck by lightning. Beaten by street thugs, etc. This would happen when he least expects it to happen. Most like God is telling you, Oh, I'm going to punish him. I'm going to punish him in the streets. I'm going to punish him for every, so that everybody can see. Oh, he, his punishment is not going to be somewhere where nobody can see it. I'm going to punish him in the middle of the daring street. So, when you least expect it, it's going to come to you. All right, come on. Please ask because 23, 22. Thus shall it go also with the wife that leaveth her husband and bringeth in a hair by an heir. An heir by another. Okay, what does that mean, Jordan? I'm, that's simple. Um. This is simple here. Explain what you just read. All right, Alex, explain it to him. It's saying like the same like above that they said he said about the husband goes to the wife who steps out on her husband and leaves him. Not only leaves him, but has oh, she didn't leave him. Well, has a kid by another man. Yeah, she 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 cheating on her husband. Go out there and get pregnant by another man. Well, it says she leaves her husband. No, she's what? No, no, you know, she ain't leaving. Thus shall it go also with the wife that leaving her husband and bringing in an heir by another. She ain't leaving her husband, but she going out on her husband. They ain't divorced. She just yeah, she leave it and go somewhere and and and, and get pregnant and have a baby by another man. So just just the same thing as the whoremonger. The same would happen to a wife who steps out on her husband, have sex with another man, and produce a child by the other man. All right, come on, Ecclesiastes 23 and 23. For first she hath disobeyed the law of the Most High. That, 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 that's, that's against the law. And secondly, she hath trespassed her own, against her own husband. That tells you that she didn't leave her husband because she trespassed against him. And thirdly, she hath played the whore in adultery and brought children by another man. This woman committed three sins. She disobeyed the laws of the Most High. She trespassed against her husband. And third, she committed adultery and had children by another man. Come on. Ecclesiastes 23, 24. She shall be brought out into the congregation in inquisition. 
shall be made of her children. Yeah, whose babies are these? These don't look nothing like your husband. This the man would suspect that the baby isn't his. He would get a DNA test and find out whether it is his child. Now at the, at the time in Israel, the congregation would done this, would have done this. But see now in the present time, you got to step it up to the present. Now this man going to look. This don't. This child don't look like none of my other kids. This baby don't look nothing like me. He ain't got none of my features. Nothing. He don't even have. He don't even look like you. So there's gonna be an inquisition. There's gonna be some inquiry about this. Nowadays we're just gonna do a DNA test. You know, and find out whether it's his child. We don't presently have a community where the church is is in righteous standing with the Most High. Come on, please ask the twenty three twenty five. Her children shall not take root, and her branches shall bring forth no fruit. Nevertheless, the Most High will punish her through her children. They will not take root, meaning they will be no, be part of gang violence or serving long prison sentences for this transgression, unless they repent. Then the Most High will remove the sins of the mother from them and the father from them, because the father of of, of the father is through the seed which which, which the Most High God will punish those children by. Let's get this through Ezekiel 18 and 19. Yet ye say, Why? Do it not the son bear the iniquity of the father? Yeah, we're talking about that. Because this is this is why the children won't bring no root. Come on. When the son hath done that which is lawful and right, he hath kept all my statutes and hath done them, he shall surely live. That's the only way that child of those children will be will will be broken from that curse of what the father and that mother did. Because the father because the most high God will punish it, those children because of the weakness of the father. Sleeping with a, a married a married woman and producing children. Now to the women, Ecclesiasticus twenty six to twenty two. A harlot shall be accounted as spittle, but a married woman is a tower against death to her husband. A whore in Israel is like spit. So you walking around like a, a whore and, and acting like a whore and, and sleeping with everybody in the hood, most I gotta count you as spit. You you are nothing to him. But he said a married woman is a tower against death to her husband. Alright, let's get Deuteronomy twenty three and seventeen. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor sodomite of the sons of Israel. The most high God specifically states no whores or sodomites in Israel. He don't want neither of the two. You know, being homosexual, being gay in, uh, as an Israelite, we ain't talking about other nations. We're talking about among the, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And those who, throughout the diaspora, throughout Germany, throughout Asia, throughout Africa, throughout all of these different countries that you was, you was sent in the, in the sub-Saharan and the transatlantic slave trade. Those Israelites, no, no whores or sodomites among you. Ecclesiasticus 26 and 23. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man, but a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. If an Israelite man is wicked, then his portion would be a wicked woman. Even though she, you know, she might do an in interview process, you think she's a good woman because, you know, she brings up representative and her representative is well trained to, to get a good man? A so called good man? Oh. That representative gonna come up and be so smooth talking and stuff, but when you get with her and marry and all that stuff, she's gonna be as wicked as you are. She gonna be your portion. That's your portion for being wicked. Most like God is telling you, you wicked, the woman you're gonna be with, she gonna be wicked too. Alright, come on. A, dis a dishonest woman. Where you at? Ecclesiastes twenty six twenty four. A dishonest woman con contemneth shame but an honest woman will reverence her husband okay a dishonest woman uh, no man want a dishonest woman you'll be ashamed of her a dishonest woman brings shame she brings you shame you know she getting caught in the stove shoplifting and stuff everybody talking about her around you oh, man you know this, you heard about this wife she got caught in serious shoplifting went to Went to Walmart and just put all kinds of chickens and steaks under her dress. 
You'd be like, oh, damn. They should go again. Well, you know, baby, we got to go through money. Why in the hell are you in there stealing the meat? You know, I was trying to get my nails did, and I had to get, you know. All right. Please ask us 2625. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog, but she that is shamefest will fear the Lord. You women walking around with your private parts on display, you are shameless. The Most High God counts you as dogs. You might say that this is harsh, but hear what the Messiah said. See, you think this is harsh. And you out there, I'm going to tell you, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this because the fact is that most of y'all don't know the law because you're not being taught in your so-called Christian churches. But you're out there walking around with your body parts on display. You are, you trying to get a good man, but there's no way you're going to attract good men because dogs, go, dogs follow that too. You know, you ever seen a, a, a female dog in heat? She, she lets out a scent to let the other dogs know that she's ready to have sex. So, it, it's not just going to attract only the dog that you want to have sex with. It's going to attract all the da dogs in the damn neighborhood. And all of them going to be trying to mount her. Even the little poodles and stuff. And the chihuahuas and, and all. They're going to be trying to get on chairs and get on her. That's the same thing y'all doing. You're not just attracting the man. You're not just attracting the man that you want to attract. You're attracting all the dogs with fleas too. But let's see what the Messiah said. Matthews. Governor, what would you read? Matthew 5, 27 through 5, 28. Step up here. Matthew 5, 27. You have heard that it is said by them of old time. We're talking about... We're talking about Moses. Come on. Thou, sh thou shalt not commit adultery. The Messiah was quoting Exodus 20 and 14. Come on. But I say unto you. But I say unto you. Come on. That whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her. A shameless woman with, with her booty hanging out and, and all her, her, her chest all out. And you know what? You're almost about to see a nipple drop. A, nip, a nipple a drop out of her shirt. But I say unto you. He that looketh upon a woman, come on. As cometh a Wait a minute, read that again. Have committed no, adultery. read that again. Matthew 5, 28. Oh. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman who was after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So, you are causing all your Israelite brothers and, brothers and some of your sisters who are going that way, to commit adultery. Most of the men, because this is for, for men, but you know what? Because the natural truth, who has changed the truth of God into a lie, you know, and worship the creature instead of the creator, you know, but the fact is, the Messiah said, if you look upon a woman with lust, it lust after her in your heart, like that big bum, booty woman in them yoga shorts, you know, you're walking around Shameless, you are counted as a dog because the most like the most like God in His law said you are causing all your brothers to sin. Put on some damn clothes. Cover that big old booty. We know you got a big booty, so cover it. Don't have all your parts showing. You know, like I'm saying, because you're causing your brothers to commit adultery, and the most like God don't want that behavior in Israel. You're counted as a dog. You're not getting in the kingdom. There's not going to be no yoga pants walking around in the kingdom. You're supposed to be practicing the righteous act. You're supposed to be practicing the law right here. So when the, when the kingdom of heaven comes, you know how to act in the kingdom. There's not going to be no kindergarten class showing you how to act. You're supposed to know these laws. Then you, then you jump your butt. If you were to get in king, you jump your butt walking around in front of the angels with your butt hanging out. That ain't gonna happen. If you look upon, if you look on one of these shameless women with their cleavage, buttocks, and genital areas on display, 
who don't understand that they are causing their brothers to sin in the day of judgment, they will be the dogs outside of the kingdom. Let's get Revelation 22 and 14 to prove that. Because all of these scriptures go hand in hand in hand to the kingdom. Because you you want to walk around in this in this white man's world and say, Oh, it's okay for you to do that because you have changed they have changed the truth of the most high God into a lie, allowing you to do these things. This is not what you're supposed to be doing as Israelite women, princes and daughters of the most high God. Let's get Revelation twenty two and fourteen and fifteen to prove that. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. And may enter in through the gate into the city. Only way you're gonna, only way you're gonna get into the kingdom of heaven is you keep the Most High God's commandments. Now, come on, inside the kingdom will be order. Come on, for without are dogs and sorcerers. What? Are okay. dogs? Okay, that shameless woman who is counting as a dog outside of the kingdom, or that shameless woman with her booty hanging out and her chest all showing and all and, and all her genital areas being shown, she's outside the kingdom in that fire. She's a dog. She's kind of a dog. Come on. The sorcerers and whoremongers. All you people into those, the Illuminati and all of these, uh, 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 all these other special groups, you know, all you, you are uh, alphabet, you know, Greek alphabet letters and, 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 and the, uh, Masons and all of that stuff. You, you're going to be out there too. Come on. And murderers and idolaters. And whosoever loveth to make it a lie. All you liars out there, and you murderers, you know, you that hate your brother in your heart. Outside of the, of the gate of the outside of the gate of the kingdom of those shameless women counting this dog and are considered as spit. So, in conclusion, our people claim that they love the most high God, but they don't know him. John, first John two and four. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. However, the Most High God knows you, knows your ways, which are far from him. You are too busy serving the, that creature, that white Jesus, on Sunday, and Allah on Friday. Neither of these days are the Sabbath day, the seventh day. Let's get John 7 and 18. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. If you are believing in that white Jesus said, God loves the sinner but hates the sin, then you don't know your Elohim. However, he knows you well. But as the Most High God mentioned, you are serving the creature instead of the Creator. The Most High God hates you when you are violating his laws. Ecclesiastes 12 and 6. For the Most High hates sinners, hated sinners, and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly, and keep it them against the mighty day of their punishment. The Messiah told you about how wicked your heart is. Yes, the Most High God knows your heart is wicked. Let's get Mark twenty, Mark seven twenty one and twenty to twenty three. Whore from within, out of the heart of men, out of your out of your out of your mind. Come on, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders. This is your heart that the Most High God knows. Come on. Thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. More wickedness coming from the, from the heart or the mind. Because that's you, you, out of the heart of men proceeds evil thoughts. So we talk about things that come out of your mind. Come on. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. All these things defile the heart of the Israelite man, walking out of the way of understanding. The creature that you worship in mind, body, and soul has made this wickedness available to you, available for you. Do as thou wilt. That's who you're worshiping, mammon. The nature of the unbeliever. This is how we're acting today. All these precepts, you know, we're not just only talking about men, when we talk about the preachers, the pastors, all of them are acting out of order. All of them. And the Most High God told you before you even got to today how you're going to be acting. And we're acting exactly how the Scripture said. Exactly how they said that we're going to act. What book can do that? What book can tell you how you're going to be written thousands of years ago? When the, when the prophet Ezekiel back, back in five. 
580 something BCE when the Most High God told Ezekiel to prophesy about 580 something BCE that was 26, 2700 years ago what, what book can tell you about yourself you know y'all can bring all these other books up but none of them you know I read the Quran. The Quran don't have no prophecies in it. It just has. It's just a recital. And most of the things, the prophet, that so-called prophet Muhammad, which is not a prophet, was he's, he, well, he's the he's the prophet for the Arabs. He's not the prophet for Israelites. He's not. He's not a prophet according to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Down that line. You know, to, to to the nation of the Arabs, he's a prophet for them, but not for us. He, Allah is not our God. Now, he's reciting the Bible most of the time. That's why they walk around with their head covered and all that stuff with those dress on. But the Most High God didn't tell, tell women to walk around looking like that. He told them when, when, when the Word of God is coming out, they need their head covered. But, The nature of the unbeliever throughout this Bible, and that this is this is not even a, this is not even a, it's just a portion of it. Because you know I could go in Isaiah three and twelve and tell you how to how how the how the women gonna rule be ruling over the house, and the children are the, are the oppressors, and women rule over them. They that lead thee cause thee the heir, cause you the heir. There are scriptures throughout this Bible tell tell us how we as unbelievers going to behave. Anyway, if you guys got got some understanding out of my word that was given to me by the Most High God, I'm all praise. I, I give thanks to. I also giving thanks to uh, my over now over seven thousand followers on Facebook. Um, my uh, Facebook channel is. The at sign live L I V E Shabbat S H A B B A T class C L A S S and my YouTube channel is live Shabbat class both all one word the at live Shabbat class all one word and the live Shabbat class all one word too so if you uh, decide to join like subscribe, follow, leave a comment, or whatever, feel free to do so. Um, and I thank you guys for following me. Thank you for watching. And with that family and friends, I'd like to say, Shalom. Shalom.